Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. Today you may notice I'm wearing sunglasses. There's really no re- Okay, well there is a reason. It's a very simple reason. I'm tired. My eyes look tired and I recognize that. They looked tired yesterday and I was like, you know what? Let's bring back the sunglasses. I know that I don't wear them often, but they are prescriptions. So there's a reason to wear them technically, but that's not what you came here for. Today you came here for what I consider to be the problem with world length in Wizard 101 or something along those lines. Maybe the ideal world length in Wizard 101. Now I came to this when I was thinking about different videos and different topics for videos. One of my most popular videos was how long does it take to beat Wizard 101? And how I did this was I went over how long it takes to beat each Wizard 101 world. Now another aspect of that and something that I found interesting that stems from that to me is what is the ideal length for a world in Wizard 101? Because I know that some people have varying different opinions on it, but today I want to really analyze that and kind of definitively analyze the question what I consider to be the ideal world length in Wizard 101. And you could say this for many reasons, like say a King's Isle Devis is watching this video and you're wondering what's the player's ideal thoughts on world length? Well, I can weigh in my opinion and the comments I'm sure will weigh in their opinion as well. But to start, we'll start from the beginning as all good stories do. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first off, let me kind of lay out the story for you and tell you where it all begins. Back in 2008, King's Isle is working on worlds and they need to obviously create worlds for a game to be released. And they're thinking, how long do we make this game? How long is each world? And how much do we want to draw out each world? Now there's a few very obvious answers and a few factors to consider here. And that is people's attention span and people's likes. If people like a world, they will want to be in it longer. If they dislike a world, they'll obviously want to be in it less. And no world should go on for too long because people have very, very narrow attention spans, especially in video games. I can say that with 100% certainty. That is true for me. I don't like focusing on anything at all, ever. Honestly, I, I was about to say for too long, but no, I just don't like focusing on anything. And they need to keep it so that the, you know, the gamer attention span isn't actually too small. So basically, they need to make it so that it's that that ideal length, not too long, not too short. Well, how they did this originally was they kind of based the world around that and they started off pretty short. So for example, Wizard City used to be about an hour long in terms of main quest wise. Obviously there were side streets like Colossus Boulevard and Triton Underwater that could lengthen that all the way up to like four to five hours. Then you had Krakatopia, which was around three, Marleybone, which was also around three, Mushu a bit longer at five to six, and finally Dragonspire at about five to 10. They kind of played it carefully. They saw the ideal world length at around that amount of time, and they didn't want to detract from the game by making these worlds too long. Now come Arc 2, King's Isle knew that they needed to make this game bigger and better than ever. Obviously they had Arc 1, and they experienced success with Arc 1. People enjoyed the game, people liked Malastare as a whole, and they were excited for changes to come. So in their head, they're thinking, okay, we need to make things bigger, we need to make things better. And this could easily be shown in arc two. And I actually genuinely think this is where they went wrong in this game. For world length, they tried to make it longer and especially longer than Dragonspire. I don't think there is a single arc two world that is shorter than Dragonspire. Maybe Zafaria, maybe, but definitely not the other ones. While Celestia may have less quests than Dragonspire, it ends up coming out to be longer than it. Zafaria is actually decently short compared to what you'd expect, but Avalon is like 12 to 14 hours as Tekka is like 20 plus hours and finally Chrysalis is even longer than that at 30 to 40 hours. So where did they go wrong here and what do I think is the problem with this? If you ask anyone's least favorite world in this game it would be as Tekka. Now as Tekka for me and what I think the problem with it is is it failed those two tests earlier that I said are important. The gamer attention span and people's likes. People didn't like as Tekka because of how difficult some of the bosses were, the just general aesthetic of it, and almost everything about the world in of itself. And finally, the attention span, they missed the mark there because Azteca was too long. And this is the first instance in this game where I think the world length got way too long. Like, obviously, I would say... Avalon is bordering it at around 12 to 14 hours, but Azteca is when things got too long at definitely over 20 hours of completion time, which gives us our first clue of what the ideal world length is, but we're not done yet. We need to continue 
on with analyzing. Next up we have Chrysalis, and Chrysalis is even longer than Azteca, but Chrysalis is a bit different for a few reasons. First off I'd like to say is that originally Chrysalis was broken up into two parts, so originally it didn't feel as long, at least in that segmented section, each part taking like a little bit shorter than Azteca I would say to complete. Now obviously when we're doing it all at once it feels just as long because we're doing it all at once, but it actually is still split up, and it's split up by Darkmoor. Basically, nowadays in Wizard 101, you get to level 100 and Darkmoor about halfway through Chrysalis. This may not actually sound ideal, but genuinely I do think it is, because it splits up Chrysalis and makes it feel not as long as Azteca, at least in my eyes. And that's funny because the quest length of Chrysalis is almost 100 more than Azteca, so it really shows just how much that splits it apart. I think that's actually pretty important for the world. But generally, what are people's thoughts on Arc 2 and what did King's Isle realize and learn from this? Do not make worlds too long. Everyone who did Azteca and Chrysalis said that they were too long, and King's Isle took this into account and made Arc 3. Now, from here, I'm just going to kind of speed it up because I don't want to take too long on it, but you can see almost immediately it's night and day. Chrysalis was 299 quests and took like 40 hours, whereas Polaris was 100 quests and took about 10, potentially less than 10, maybe even 8. King's Isle said, okay, here's what the length shouldn't be and let's adjust it based on that. You can see this trend actually continues on with other worlds. So Mirage takes about 10 hours to beat and Imperia takes about 14 or so, give or take. For Caramel, it takes about eight and finally for Lemuria it takes about eight as well potentially ten. So with that established what is the ideal length of a wizard 101 world? Well obviously it's subjective and it's different for everyone but I would argue and what I'm going to argue is that the optimum length for a wizard 101 world is ten hours. Now you can kind of see this for a few reasons. First off Arc 3 and Arc 4, this is around what I would say the average is for these two worlds. Obviously, the average is probably a bit more closer to 8, but you could argue 10 and it probably wouldn't change much. 10 hours is what I would consider this nice little happy medium length, whereas things like Azteca are obviously too long at 20, and things such as Marleybone are way too short at around 2 to 3. This is like the optimum length where it doesn't feel like it goes by too fast, but it doesn't feel like it overstayed its welcome, and that's one of the biggest and most important things about this game is not overstaying its welcome. And I think what made me realize this and realize that 10 was the optimum was actually Avalon, because Avalon is one of my favorite worlds. I love it and I've said I love it multiple times, but I will say it does drag a little bit, especially in around the Dundara the Weird section. And funny enough, when I look at it, if you kind of cut down those sections, I would say it takes about 12 hours. If you just made it 10 hours, it probably wouldn't overstay its welcome at all. And this is what I think is optimum. Now that I've said that, let's get into the final part of this video. Is King's Isle living up to the optimum length? Well, I would say yes, but no. The reason why I actually say no is quite simple, is Caramel and Lemuria most definitely are shorter than 10 hours, and Caramel and Lemuria both go by actually pretty fast. Caramel you can finish in about 6 hours if you try, and Lemuria you can finish in around 6 to 8 if you try, so about the same. Both of these worlds in my opinion felt a little bit short, especially Caramel. Caramel felt really short. Like in only maybe 2-3 to three hours of questing, I got over halfway done with Caramel on my mid. So I'm already like decently far into Caramel and it's barely been any time at all, which is a shame because I think Caramel is a really, really good world. It just feels like it's a little bit too short. On account of this, they have Mirage, which is at around that perfect 10 hour range. And Mirage, in my opinion, feels almost perfect in terms of pacing. It doesn't feel like it overstays its welcome. It doesn't feel like it drags, but it doesn't feel too short like say Caramel does. So with that in mind, the optimal length, I don't think King's is following it perfectly, and I would just recommend adding just a simple little bit extra. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to say it. I think six to eight hours also works fine. It's when it gets to six and earlier that it feels a little bit short and a little bit rushed, at least in my eyes. But in my opinion, that's what the optimal length is and what King's Isle should stick to. But that's really it for today. I want to know your thoughts. What do you think below? What is the optimal world length in your opinion? Again, mine is around 10 hours. I think that that is the optimal length where a world doesn't feel too short 
short but doesn't feel too long and i'm curious to what you think like do you agree with me do you think that caramel feels a little bit rushed or do you think you know that's actually the optimum world length do you not mind longer worlds because that's something that's interesting as well i know some people don't mind longer worlds and i don't either depends on the world itself but it's just an interesting topic of discussion but that's it thank you all for watching i will see you in the next video adios